Hi, I'm Adam Steele for Hot Pole Studios. And people have been asking me every time they come into the studio, uh, what sample rate should we be recording at? Why, why this sample rate? Can we use this sample rate? Can we use that sample rate? And I just wanted to do a video to talk about it and why the whole discussion is kind of pointless these days. Okay, so it's not completely pointless, I just wanted to get your attention. Now, sample rates are an interesting subject. It's very difficult to hear the difference between different sample rates, really, I think. And you'll find wildly differing opinions on this. You'll find guys who go, Oh, I just record at 44.1 kilohertz and that's all I need. And guys who are like, I record at 384 kilohertz because I believe it's a purer tone. Now, my answer is, I always ask, what are we recording for? Now that sounds like a bit of a stupid question, but different output formats need different sample rates quite often because they've been set in stone by uh, standards that have been put in place over the years. For instance, uh, CDs, and therefore most digital audio, run at 44.1 kilohertz because Back in the stone age of digital recording, uh, when the CD standard was being finalised and all the guys from all the big companies were saying, oh, what should we settle on for sample rate? Um, Laserdisc video, which they're about that big, and they, they had video on that was kind of awful. Um, their video standard was already 44.1 kilohertz, so they looked at that and went, that'll do, we'll, we'll use that. All right, fine, we've got it, whatever, it already exists. We don't need to change anything. All right, fine. So that's where 44.1 kilohertz came from. Because it's a bit of a stupid number to use for audio. I mean, if you think about it, um, human hearing goes from, I don't know, 30 hertz, 20 hertz down that way, up to 20 kilohertz at the top. Now you'd say, why do we need any more than that? Why, why record higher? Now, the simple reason in digital terms is something called the Nyquist theorem, which says that we can hear up to half of the recorded sample rate above that it all tends to get uh, cancelled down now that that is science that's fact so why would we record above that um, why not 40 kilohertz why didn't we just change to it why did we go to 48 now 48 was decided for the DVD standard when that came out now it's a slightly higher sample rate they had the bit rate to to deal with it on DVDs and they believed that that extra bit of uh, range at the top meant that you could hear things in a kind of a bigger space. One of the things about really high sample rate audio is that it's not what you can hear it's what you can feel and one of the strange things about audio it turns out is that if you get a tone at about one kilohertz and then sweep something really high, like higher than dogs can hear, a lot of the time you can hear things going on in the lower tone because they interfere with each other. So it's not the fact that you can't hear the thing at the top, it's the fact that the thing at the top exists and is doing something to the bits you can hear. And now, what I do for the videos that I'm putting on YouTube is I record everything at 48 kilohertz because YouTube and DVDs video export formats all natively work at 48 kilohertz so why not run at that now if I'm working with a band, a band on an album that's for CD release then we will prioritize 44.1k interestingly a lot of the more kind of prog rock and gent bands and that, those guys are ta starting to favor 48 kilohertz because the Axe FX, which a lot of them use, runs natively at 48 and doesn't run any other sample rate. So if they're trying to record digitally out of that, that forces their hand. Now, uh, guys like Lavery and Cliff from uh, Fractal Audio, who make the Axe FX, have talked recently about how they would rather be working around 64 kilohertz, because apparently that's just about the optimum for getting all your filters to sound right digitally apparently and getting everything to just sound as natural as possible. 
Um, there are sample rates that I can use 88.2 kHz, which is a double of 44.1, which makes it kind of easy because everything just runs at double speed. And 96 kHz, which is 48 kHz again at double speed. This apparently sounds more like analog. Um, I can't really hear it, to be honest. Um, I mean, yes, maybe if you're working in kind of classical or film scoring or something that's really supposed to be as clean as possible, maybe you can feel the details, but in kind of rock and roll and pop and metal, I don't think that difference really translates much. I mean, what that's going to have to boil down to at some point in that chain is resampling as well because almost every consumer has a device that either runs at 48 kilohertz or 44.1 which means you're going to have to take the original signal and kind of dumb it down a bit now what i've noticed with resampling is most resampling units and mathematical software um kind of causes problems because quite often you're dividing a number and you need other whole numbers. You, you can't divide, say, 1001 and get a nice round number. You don't get 500 or 501. So over time, that makes everything slightly not right, which means for me, I'd rather be working just at the sample rate that um, we're going to use in the end. Now, there are guys who are going to shout at me on YouTube now and go, oh, but, but 192 kilos is better, or when you get that high with your sample rates, there is what's called inter-sample distortion, that your timing circuit is going so fast that it can't be perfectly stable. Now, guys like Lavery have written big like white papers, big articles on this, and I, I'm inclined to believe them, having done a music technology degree where physics was a big component. These guys have explained in scientific terms that if you go that fast, you get distortion because your converters can't keep up, which negates any benefit you're getting. And if, if anything, you're doubling the amount of file space you're using, you're doubling the amount of processor that you're using as well, and you're not getting any benefit. So what's the point? You know, again, that's my opinion. If you've got an opinion that's different and you're willing to have a civilised debate, I'm always interested, if you're just going to slang me off, eh, whatever. Uh, I'm Adam Steele for The Hot Poll, um, talk to us on Twitter, um, leave comments in the section below, uh, talk to us on our Ask FM, Hot Poll Studios. See you later. <laughs>